Today we're going to be talking about what writing rules are and when to break them. We're going to be talking about 10 of the most popular ones that I have heard and that I've heard others say. Um, these are things that people will say, these are rules of writing to make your writing better. And these can make your writing better, but you shouldn't take them that seriously. Because just like any other rule, it can be broken in an elegant way that can enhance your story. Now, does that mean that you need to break all the rules willy-nilly all over the place? No, they are there for a reason. But we like to break them selectively. For example, <laughs> um, you may have heard that if it doesn't relate to the plot, then you shouldn't add it in your story at all. False. If it builds character, builds the world, or it relates to the plot, you should add it. Now with a caveat, if it distracts from the plot, then don't include it. That is what the rule really should be. If it distracts from the plot, then don't include it. So if you're going on and on about world building for seven chapters and the plot isn't moving forward, that's a problem. But if during those seven chapters the plot is continuing to move forward as you're world building, and you're, I don't know, traveling across a great realm, and so you're learning about the great realm as you travel through it and they're fighting monsters, you know? That is going to help build the world while also simultaneously moving the plot forward. It should, it should not distract from the plot, but so long as it doesn't distract from the plot, if it is building character or building the world, it does not have to be plot relevant to be in your story. Next thing I would say is avoiding adverbs. <laughs> this is one that Stephen King perpetuates above all else. Don't use adverbs, they're like the paving the road to heck or something like that. False. Sorry Stephen King, you're just flat out wrong. Using adverbs is not a problem. The problem is when you use adverbs for everything. Now if you say she moved slowly and then quickly and then rolled her eyes lazily, yes, you can use too many adverbs. But if, there, if you have a, I don't know, 50,000 word story and you only use 65 adverbs, that's fine. And there's nothing wrong with a handful of adverbs in your story. Adverbs are a part of our language for a reason and they can be used to enhance things. You do not need to completely and utterly avoid adverbs. Adverbs are sometimes even necessary to help us describe things. They are part of the English language and they need to be used. <laughs> now, again, if you're using it all the time and there's like 27,000 in your novel, <laughs> then that's a problem. <laughs> but if it's a handful in comparison to the overarching word count, you don't need to worry about it. The other issue is using an adverb after said. So like said quietly, said quickly, said lazily. That can be an issue, just use a different word. Like if they said it quietly, then just say he whispered. <laughs> so that is the main issue with adverbs. People see them as being used too often or as being used out to um, fix the word said instead of just using a new word. Um, if the, neither of those are your problem, then use an adverb. Use your adverbs. <laughs> Next, um, people say to avoid inserting yourself into your novel. Now, a self-insert character is when you basically write yourself into the novel. Now, the reason people say to not do this is because most of the time they end up as what's called Mary Sue's or Mary, Marty Stew's. Those are characters that people find really obnoxious and annoying because they're too perfect and they're too amazing. And most of the time when people do self-inserts, they don't do true self-inserts with flaws and issues and struggles. Instead, they do a self-insert that is perfect and amazing and super, super powerful. And when I say flaws, I don't mean like they have anxiety. That's not a flaw, that's a mental health struggle. <laughs> I mean flaws as in like they have anger issues, they have trouble apologizing, they have miscommunication issues. Like those are flaws rather than just saying, oh yeah, I have anxiety or I have this. Those, those aren't flaws, those are mental health things, <laughs> just to clarify. So. That's why you should generally avoid self-inserts, but that does not mean you can't do a self-insert character. All it means is that if you do a self-insert character, you need to make sure that you are doing it properly. You are doing it in such a way that the self-insert character does have true flaws and is not overpowered. 
Next, typically people say to avoid telling jokes. The reason why is because everyone has a different sense of humor and it's hard to master. But you're never going to get better at writing comedy if you don't write jokes in your books. So write those jokes. Practice. Practice, practice, practice your comedy and keep going with that. Next, um, with rules of grammar, you have to know the rules first in order to break them. Incorrect. Um, does it help? To make you to have you know the the rules before you break them, absolutely. But it is not a necessity. If you don't know the rules, just write it the way that feels natural, and you can always have an editor fix it later. That's the whole job of an editor is to fix your grammar and your punctuation later. Just write the way you want to write, and later figure out what the rules are, and then maybe self-edit. Maybe have an editor go over it. Figure it out afterwards. Don't worry about it right now. If you're so busy worried about grammar rules that you can't write, that's not healthy. That's not going to help you write more. Next, always finish a writing project before you start a new project. Ultimately, this leads to burnout, fatigue, frustration, and sometimes even giving up on a project entirely. Taking a break from a project is not a problem. The problem is abandoning the project. So instead of saying always finish what you are writing before starting a new project, say, instead I would change the rule and say always make sure that you have a time limit before you come back to that project. So you say, hey, I will come back to that project in five months. I will come back to that project in two weeks, whatever amount of time you think you need. And during that time, pick a new project and work on it. Or alternatively, some authors have found it's actually really helpful to work on two and three projects at a time because when they burn out on one project, then they go to the next project and by the time they're burnt out on that project, they come back to the old project because it's all refreshed for them. I would highly recommend this method. I personally find it very helpful and I've had several other people that I know who are writers struggle with this and find that um, writing multiple projects is actually really helpful for them. Um, so keep that in mind. You don't have to finish a project before you start a new one. Next, write a certain amount of words per day. Having a word count goal, nothing wrong with that. But you can also have this lead to burnout. It's important to keep in mind if you want to write 200 words per day and you can, great. But if you can't and you are super burnt out that day, I don't know, you had some a family member get injured or in the hospital or something like that, or you are feeling super, super stressed about a school project, you don't have to write 200 words that day. In fact, I would encourage you not to because it will develop an unhealthy relationship with writing if you're forcing yourself to write when you don't feel ready to write. Um, now, obviously, never forcing yourself to write is not gonna get anything done. You do have to force yourself to write sometimes, but force yourself to write in healthy ways. Say, hey, okay, I can write. I'm in a mentally healthy space to write. Um, make sure you're not overly stressed, you're not grieving, you're not, you know, having this trouble with all these big emotions first. Um, unless it helps you, then do it. But if those things are causing you to not want to write, then don't. And then after you assess that situation, say, hey, I really should write today. And then Go ahead and try to write as much as you can. If you don't quite make your word count goal, that's okay. It's ultimately better to avoid burnout than it is to write a certain amount of words per day. Next thing that people say to avoid is in-depth description. Now I'm gonna put a caveat on this. They are correct in the regard that you don't wanna just info dump on the reader and just tell them everything about this house to the point where you've described the house in such great detail that they know even what the mouse holes on the inside look like and like, the stain on the front living room carpet. That's not ultimately important. However, that does not mean that you should not describe things in depth. The beauty of painting a scene is something that is super important. And people like Margaret Atwood and J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis only were able to paint those scenes by practicing writing in depth. So keep practicing writing in depth. Don't avoid it entirely or you'll never learn. Next, if you are bored writing it, then the readers will be bored reading it. False. There are so many times where I've seen people go, oh, well, I'm bored writing this character, like, um, scene where they're learning about how to use their powers or they're learning how to um, do this specific uh, magic spell or something like that. We want to know. As the readers, we want to see those tri-fail cycles. It's like uh, the freaking, it's Alohomora. It's Leviosa, not a Leviosa. And like learning Alohomora and all these things. 
that's interesting in Harry Potter because we want to see it as readers. Even if you are bored to tears writing it, you can re-edit it and figure it out to make it interesting. You can also do that too. Find a way to write those things in a way that's interesting. Don't just skip it entirely. Character development and world development are super important to be able to do. And you shouldn't just skip over them and say whatever. All right, last one, write what you know. This one feels obvious to me, but it's not always obvious to people. Write what you know in the regard that you should write things akin to what you know. So for example, if you know roller coaster rides, you can compare riding a dragon to roller coaster rides, but obviously you can't write what you know if you've never written, ridden dragon. But you collect from your own experiences, collect from what you think it would feel like, collect from what you have lived through. And that's obviously something that you need to focus on because there's no way you, you can write what you know if it's fantasy or science fiction, but you can write based off of what you know. And that should be more of what the rule is. Write closer to your experiences, even if they are not an experience you can experience, like being a vampire <laughs> or riding a dragon. Um, thank you so much. I hope to see you all on the 26th. Um, that is when the next Writers Club meeting is. Um, so September 26th, 2024, look forward to seeing you. Thanks, bye.